Nigeria. But let us come back to Lagos State, Nigeria. They say when things have fallen apart, the center indeed cannot hold. There seems to be a drama, and someone referred to it as the House of Cards, Lagos State. <laughs> Lagos and um, indeed much of the ent entire Southwest was on tenterhooks yesterday as political permutations against the second term for Governor Akimu Miambode reached a crescendo with the unraveling of the governor's political base. Worse, the governor's prospects of serving out the rest of his term, it was lent, was hanging in the balance upon claims of momentum to remove him from office if he does not drop his second term aspiration. Chukudi, there's so much drama going on right now. Drama. Please explain this drama to us. <laughs> Thank you very much. You see, when Lagos sneezes, Nigeria catches cold. Aside from the population demographics, looking at the spread in the 36 states, Lagos, you know, has a rich history of uh, political, I'm, I'm looking for something that will make it sound like it's an action film. Political, um, no, 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 no. Just, just leave a political drama. Political drama. No, drama does not sound. Political, I don't want to say higi haga, because it's not water than whatever I want to say. <laughs> but the truth is, if you look at the peculiarity of Lagos, and how the Ashiwa Jubala met in Ubu, the Jagabambogu of Nigeria, has been able to ward off um, the opposition, for example, the PDP in Lagos, and maintain a particular structure, you would know that uh, anybody that the Ashiwaju favors, the person has an advantage. But yeah. Now, mm, okay, sorry, go on. It has been reported in the past that you cannot separate politics from governance, especially looking at Lagos. And we all saw what played out before His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos, Mr. Akin Umiambo, they emerged as the candidate of the All Progressives Congress in 2015, 2014, for the 2015 elections. And thereafter, certain people complained that he annihilated the elders and other top shots of the political party. They tried to explain that he is not a politician, he is a technocrat. So they understand. But certain people in Ambode's camp say he gave all the powers and all the accolades to the Ashwaju, and so he had no issue whatsoever. He was expecting that his godfather would sort and settle the matter. But if you look at the drama that has unfolded now, it would seem that he is all alone. Baba Femi Hamzat of the Justice Group, you know, within political parties, they have. You know, they have cliques yeah. that people refer to as the caucus. The justice group that people say, you know, you have the former governor of Abatugura and Shpashola and certain influential members who are today the Abuja big boys. And you have the mandate group. This mandate group it has also been fused together with the Batco group. They said the Bola, uh, I mean, Tirubu campaign organization group. They are the mandate group. Yesterday, a video emerged of Cardinal James. You know, he's a senior uh, member of the All Progressive Congress. In fact, he was former deputy chairperson. And he's also considered a strong ally of Bola Metinubu. Endorsing Honorable Papajide Sonwolu. And he said that, he quoted something in Yoruba that I'm going to translate. That you have fresh water and now fresh fish. And so, by the grace of God the Almighty, in 2019, Honorable Papajide Sonwolu will emerge as the new governor, the incoming governor of Lagos. Now, certain people also reported that while they were still trying to placate um, the Ashwa Dibola Metinobu, Mr. Akin Umiambode went to Abuja to get the expression of interest and the nomination form. Even though he had not quickly settled with Baba, he had gotten the expression of interest and the nomination form. And when he returned home, people were telling him, how will you go and get this now without settling with our father? Rather than declare his intention to run for 2019 at the party secretariat, as the seventh governor, he did it at the old uh, parade ground. And people said it's the fuel dump in Alausa. The truth is, as Nigerians, the long and short of this story is, you would have people that are major players and stakeholders, if we go by Nigeria's political arrangement, where you cannot aspire to office as an independent candidate, you go to a political party. And for political parties, it is essentially about structures. But in the end, it is one man, one vote. What Nigerians must do is to begin to participate actively in government and governance. And one way of doing that is not just to say, I'm going to come out and vote on election day. You also have the right.
to suffrage and franchise, to stand in elections and to vote for your preferred candidate. You can also join political parties so that you will have a say. In Lagos now, they say it is going to be direct primaries. So every card carry member of the APC in Lagos will vote for their preferred candidate. And that's why some people are saying, hmm, it would appear that going by the politics of the benefactor that we play in Nigeria today, mm. if Baba says, let's go this way, nobody will want to go this way. But Chukudi, the thing is, the structure that we're looking at is godfatherism, and yeah. that is literally all that it is. Now, someone expresses his interest to go for a second term in 2019, but because of a particular godfather, that person is probably not going to be able to pursue those dreams. How do we start to dismantle this structure of godfatherism? It's one thing for us to speak about civic engagement, but let's actually look at the core of politics. This is a structure that we have seen for far too long, far too many years, how do we start to dismantle it? Is it possible, it? first of all? To of understand. course, Thank it's you. possible. But there's a foundational problem. It is all money politics. And when you have money politics, you have the money bags, you know, exercising or flexing their muscles. Mm. But like I said, you know, I read in my government's book, the action group of old, under Baba Ulawa, mm. you know, the NCNC, National Council of Nigeria Citizens, under Unam de Azikiwe, you know, even Nepu, Different political parties. Yeah. You had normal Nigerians, card carry members, who contributed their widow's might to funding the political party. You remember they say he who pays the piper or she dictates the tune. To balance. He or she that pays the piper dictates the tune. Because of the money politics that we play, and you have somebody saying, This is where we are going to. People look up to that person because of the influence that the person wields. Is that why we're seeing Femi Otedola dictating the tune of the PDP now? Now, when newsmen reached out to him, he did not say yes, he did not say no. He said he's on vacation in Paris. And then at the end of the but day... But in May, he had said that he was not going to contest against Akin Umiambode in a series of tweets. But that was May. This is September. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. In fact, in politics, uh -uh, People decamped on the floor of the House of Senate, of the Senate, and in, by evening, they said they did not decamp, that they, were, they went to their own party caucus, the party that they decamped from, that they read out their names. They said it was a misunderstanding. In politics, in the twinkling of an eye, things can change. But if Nigerians really want to effect change with respect to all these structures within political parties, remember I said that in political parties, sorry, remember I said that if we go by Nigeria's law, I cannot wake up one day and say, oh, I am so passionate to serve. I want to run as an independent candidate. No, it's not possible. I have to go through a political party. Remember, when you go through the political party, because of money politics, there are influential members in that political party. If I do not emerge as the candidate of that party, there is no way that I can present myself to be voted for because there is no provision for the independent candidacy. Now, Chukudi, I want us to discuss the person that uh, Tinubu is trying to put forward in the APC. But before that, the phone lines are now open to you. You can call in and join Chukudi, Oliver, and I on this conversation. Let us know what your thoughts are. This is huge in politics, so of course we do want to hear from you. You can see the phone numbers at the bottom of the screen right now. But the conversation continues. Let's speak about the man that Tinubu wants to put forward as the governorship candidate for the APC. Now, it's important that we are clear and fair. The Ashiwa Jubola Metinubu has not come out to endorse anyone. But people who have come out, certain people that have come out to endorse, are considered to be very close to him. That mm. people feel that if somebody that is very close to the Ashiwa Jubola says this, then it means that the person is expressing the interest, but he okay. hasn't said anything. Just one second. We have a call coming in from Oshun State. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Hello Nigeria. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for calling in. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I I love the program, and I just want I just want to ask, like the the, 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 the hello. I'm fine. Good afternoon. Okay, you can go ahead. We're listening. Yeah, I, I want to know. I want to ask um, the the guest that the godfatherism in Nigeria is it is it is it possible to die totally? Is it possible? Yeah, okay, yes. The truth is, I mean, we've asked the question. We have a system where we channel a lot of money into our political um, activities. And if you have money bags, these people are, to a considerable degree, going to determine. And that is why when Comrade Adam Soshamole, you know, assumed office as chairperson of the APC, 
He said that the APC as a political party was going to give power to the people, the ordinary people. And how do you give power to the ordinary people? By ensuring that they have a say in what happens in the political party. And how do they have a say? If, for example, they can come out to say, this is what we want, and the majority will carry the day. But if we have a situation where meeting, 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 you go to certain meetings and you don't, you cannot express yourself because there is a money bag that finances, and you know elections don't come cheap in Nigeria. We well, spoken of the indirect primaries, where people earn dollars. It was reported that, you know, in the past, as high as $5,000, $10,000, in the presidential elections. Chukudi, hold that thought a second. Ferdinand is calling us in from Abia State. Hello and welcome to Hello Nigeria. You can go ahead. Hello? Oh, we seem to have lost Ferdinand. Go ahead. So, I mentioned the Action Group and the NCNC and other political parties in Nigeria's First Republic. How, as you know, an average party member, I would go with my card and say, this is my five pounds, for example, or this is my five naira, and you mark. Because I pay my dues, because we have, you know, um, certain um, fees to pay. I also have a say. But now, where, I mean, po no, politics is not cheap in Nigeria, let's be fair. People fly private jets, go to campaign grounds, spend a lot of money, have to share, because, I look at the, the elections now, 5,000, 4,000, who gave the money? The person that dropped that money will most definitely have some sort of influence when you get into office. So all of this undermine the system. It's not going to be easy, but it is a possibility. So there's no way we can make crowdfunding a major source of them generating income? How do you, how do you want to fund? A, where do you crowdfund it from? How? Even you that you are paying money, you don't even trust those that handle the money. All right. We have one call from Ifain calling from Kaduna. Hello, Ifain. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. All right. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Chukudi. Yes, Ifain. It's nice seeing you. Thank you. I've always loved your view about things. Thank you very much. I'm thinking that if our body will be man enough, for your information, Ashwagi is not from Lagos State. It's from Osho Street. We all know it. And Ampote is a bona fide Lagos in between. But if I quickly, let's just point this out here. Um, you know, people have argued for and against his state of origin and the likes. But if we go by what the Constitution requires, you don't have to be from this state, from this state, okay. to stand for elections. For example, there is Honorable Emeka Idimogu, from where I come from, it's all of federal constituency too. He's representing my constituency in the Lagos State House of Assembly. There's also Honorable Tony Wulu. He's from Imo State, but he's in the Lagos State House of Assembly. In fact, yes. I think that if you look at Nigeria, Lagos State has more people who are not even Lagosians that are representing in elective positions. Sure, sure. So, but where I'm going to is this. Listen to me. Okay. Listen to me. You see, it's about time we take our destiny into our hands by Ambody standing out, forgetting about that uh, Godfatherism. Be a man. He can even, uh, if I may call it, switch or to, uh, to PDP or uh, move to PDP and contest this election and see if he will not break the winds of uh, Tinibu. Uh, enough is enough. We keep on uh, 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 massaging the ego of these criminals. It's about time we break out from all those nonsense and, and take our destiny into a humble day should be a man and forget about Tinibu and see if he will not win the election from any party. Because that guy is indeed popular. I am in Kaduna. I can feel humble day in Kaduna. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you, you fine. fine. Wow. You okay. know, some people say political naivety when we say things like this. But on the other hand, this is the voice of a citizen. This is what citizens want to know, that somebody can contest without being shackled by what anyone else wants to say or do. Yeah, very true. But 
it's always good to look at, you know, antecedents or precedents. That way, you would be able to gauge the situation. He has said, you know, our body should be man enough. And we can interpret that to say, you know, you're going against all the structures that exist or all the structures that brought you into the office and you want to test your popularity. But people would advise you, you know, some people, not all. Remember, I always insist it is one man, one vote. And this is my personal opinion. People would advise you that in politics, it's important not to sacrifice, you know, all your chances in years to come because of four years or two years or three years. They will tell you to, you know, take it as it is and move on. You don't know what will happen. Let me give this example. You will know that Ayode, I am Ayodele Fayoshe, the rock, the governor of Ekiti State, served out only one term. But he came back after how many years? And served out the second term from 2014 to 2018. You would also remember that Dr. Kayo Defiemi, the incoming governor of, uh, no, the governor elect of Ekiti State, also did four years before he was, you know, uh, defeated in the polls in 2014 by Ayo Today he has come back. People will tell you that in politics, you don't know what will happen. And in truth, four years can go like this. All right, Chukudi, let's hear what Okoro calling from Ikorodu has to say. Hello, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you yeah. for calling. Please go ahead. Unfortunately, we lost that call. Chukudi, what final thoughts? What are your projections for how things will play out in Lagos as we prepare for 2019? It's going to be very interesting. Before the APC gubernatorial primaries, I mean, there's still like two weeks. And in two weeks, a lot can happen. I hear, I don't know how true it is, that the Oba of Lagos, Oba Ridwa and Akiolu, will be leading a delegation of the, you know, traditional leaders in Lagos to the Bodilon Hall of the Ashiwaji Bola Metinubu to maybe for one last time plead with him to Jebure in Yoruba as to have mercy. But then, in politics, people would look at the situation and say, if you have something to lose and you treat us some type of way, what will happen when you don't have anything to lose? Let me give this example. Mm. You would hear often that a lot of the political um, leaders in Nigeria do well in their first term. Why? Because when it comes to general elections for the next term, mm. they feel, ah, I've done this now, vote for me. But that's uh, actually, we have come to a place where we say, oh, this person, he worked in the first term. It's okay, let him come back and steal money. We've gotten so used to all this happening. That's but what let's I'm take saying. our very last call for this. Hello, Haruna. How are you? Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. All right, Haruna. Thank you for calling. Please go ahead. Unfortunately, Haruna call. was our last call. But Chukudi, this has been a very, very, you know, long conversation. And we do appreciate all your thoughts. And, you know, we look forward to seeing how things play out in elections 2019. And we are hoping, just like other Nigerians, that Godfatherism comes to an end and that we get to see people running because they merit it and that they run with the support of the people who believe in the government that they're pushing for. Pushing yeah. for. Can I just throw in one last question before we round up this discussion? If Otedola comes out to confirm the news that we saw yesterday, what exactly, Chukudi, is that really and truly really going to mean? Well, I mean, he's influential. He's a billionaire businessman. But the truth is, if you look at the APC as a political party, APC is, you know, well-rooted in Lagos. The other political party, or the major polit political party, opposition political party, is the People's Democratic Party that I think went to sleep after 2015. But with somebody of Otedola status, and remember we said money politics, a lot to throw around. Mm. Certain people are already writing their proposal now, hoping that they would make whatever they are going to make. But I really think that in politics, it's always good to just sit back and watch so that you're not surprised at the outcome of anything. It's going, to, it's going to play a great role in deciding, because it's also from Ekpe, if the governor, Akin Umiyambode, does not get the ticket of the APC. So I just want to sit down and get my popcorn, so that I would not, you know, <laughs> it, it would not lose taste. When Do you think that that is why he didn't want to run um, next to Ambode? But wait, answer that in just a question, in, in a second. We have a call coming in from Nasarawa State. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Hello, Nigeria. 
Oh, we've lost that caller. Oh, yeah, tell us. Do you think that's why? Well, it's a factor. I mean, Ambode is from Ekwe. He's also from Ekwe. People had used this to the reason he gave in May. You don't can't have two people from the same place. I mean, there's no point. And it's not like they are. They ha he has anything to lose. They are great friends. So why go against your brother? You understand? But remember I said, if Ambode, who is from Ekwe, he would not run against him. Maybe if there is another person that is not from Ekwe, it just might happen. Mm. Okay. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how this plays out. But thank you so much for joining us. Chukudi, Chukudi. thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.